Hi guys, it's Bly, and this is Dwarf Fortress, a game of many stories and worlds waiting to be created, and I've finally gotten around to documenting my own. I'm still pretty new to the game, so I'll definitely be learning as I go, but honestly, that sounds like a lot of fun. Hmm, I don't really like this one. The civilizations are too spread out, and to be honest, I think I want to do more than 50 years. Yeah, this world is cool and all, except for one thing. I forgot to put in the No Aquifers mod. I know it's part of the Dwarf Fortress experience to deal with aquifers, but I'm a big baby, and I like to have fun. So for now, get in there, little buddy. This is the universe of enchantments. It's beautiful. There's a ton of goblins on this small island right here, and a volcano tucked into the edge of the map. To be honest, I like the general layout of this world, so I'll keep it. So it's time to create our first fortress. The five civilizations that I can pick from are the Room of Moisting, the Amusing Poli, the Ace Papers, who have a Goblin Queen, the Red Quake, and the Urn of Mightiness. I really like the swampy area that the Red Quake have settled into. There's goblins, elves, and the Urn of Mightiness directly to our north. At this time I had an idea for a town, kind of like Booty Bay. And if you've ever played World of Warcraft, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. But for those who don't, Booty Bay is a large pirate port city ran by goblins, built into the cliffs just off the sea on the southern tip of Stranglethorn Vale. I still didn't have a true plan or goal in mind, but I certainly want this fort to have a bit of a weirder design, just like Booty Bay. With all that in mind, I decide to settle here, to the west of our civilization, in the worshipful swamp in the accidental land. There's plenty of vegetation in a fluxstone lair, which I hear is good, but the best part is the untamed wilds. I've never embarked in untamed wilds, so I'm excited and ready to see what's in store for our dwarves. With the ocean of intensity sitting to our west, our final embark spot is right here. For our dwarves, we have Sarvesh Artistibimer, our expedition leader and administrator. Shem Uriskur, the woodworker, Namal Edenanshen, and Thicket Zunterroltar, our two miner, Reg Rithshalid, our fisher dwarf, Nil Lillard, <laughs> what the fuck? Nil Lillard Astot, our dedicated trader, and Kavish Endocarbon, the farmer and our brewer. For items, I went with a basic embark plus additional food and drink and cloth. I didn't want to go too crazy, and also, I'm kind of new, so I'm not super sure what I need. But hey look, we got two yaks. The name of our group will be the Brutal Beers, and our fortress itself is named the Chaos of Fortune. I hope for a little bit of craziness with the chaos, and the fortune, it just sounded like a pirate thing to me, I don't know. A new chapter of Dwarven history begins here, at this place. Ririth Akam, the Chaos of Fortune. Strike the Earth. I really like the map we have. There's a lot of flat land, a big ocean, and a little slope we can dig our way into. Before anything, I named my expedition leader, Cyania, after a friend who was watching my stream on twitch.tv slash blyblye. They were the first one to show up, so they deserved it. If at any time you guys would like me to name a dwarf after you, pop into the stream or comment below and I'll put your name into the world. To start, I designate some trees to be chopped, create a wood stockpile on the coast, and dig into this little slope. After a bit of digging and tree chopping, I learned that wood can be moved by the ocean waves, which is really cool, but it's like super annoying. For my workshops, I really like this box design. It fits four workshops per square, and it makes it look kind of uniform in my opinion. Once it's been mined out, I put down your basic workshops, being the carpentry, stoneworking, crafts, and all that. I also mine out some basic offices for a manager and a bookkeeper. After that, we work on some bedrooms for the dwarves, and like that, we have our farming, workshops, and bedrooms, all ready to go. Not soon after all of that, a supply caravan from our civilization, the Red Quakes, arrives at the Chaos of Fortune. I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do here at the Chaos of Fortune, so I requested food and drink and cloth as well, and they want handware and crowns for next year. So I make sure to have somebody making stone crowns for the rest of the year. After offering them all the cups I accidentally made with a uh, repeated job, we buy all their food and drink, so I won't have to worry about starvation or dehydration. While setting up my farms, I noticed that I could plant above-ground plants which confused me. That's when I noticed the two empty space tiles chilling on the surface. 
So I covered them up so there wouldn't be any confusion. But for some reason in Dwarf Fortress, sunlight can travel through floors that aren't soil. I learned that after a 15 minute deep dive about why I could all of a sudden grow above ground plants in the not above ground. I, I, I love this game. So I decide to dig a channel into the ground. And then uh, this happens. Everyone okay? <laughs> oh, it broke. <laughs> Thankfully, no one got hurt, so we end up covering the hole with some sun immune flooring. Around this time, winter comes, and I get my first idea. I want to make a tavern out by the ocean. Imagine you and your dwarf buddies having a couple beers before catching some herrings out by the sea. So we start by making a dock. The ugliest dock I've ever seen. After creating that dock abomination, we lay down the flooring for our tavern, and the dwarves get straight to work. While construction is underway, we create a temple for everyone to pray to their various gods, the Abbey of Universes. Hopefully it'll help some of the dwarves stay happy. With that finished, we come back to finish the first floor of our sea tavern. First we'll add some walls and brewing workshops. After that, we add a roof above our heads. Oh, and I forgot about this uh, elf caravan. I don't know, sorry guys, maybe next year. Well, at least that's the worst thing that's happened so far. Who died? Oh shit. <laughs> well, all right, never mind. I guess it's time to make a tomb. There will be plenty of more deaths, so might as well get started on this. With the roof finally complete, we make a little stockpile for drink barrels to be held in the attic. Once we complete our second story roof, of course. And you know what? I can finally say that we did it. We've created a tavern down by the sea. And honestly, I love it. We end up naming it the Angry Fountain of Ends. I thought the name was fitting with it being on the edge of the world and whatnot. Our trader also becomes our tavern keeper. He's been pretty good with customers, so I'd like him to run it. Not soon after, another trade caravan comes along. We end up buying some more food and drink and uh, some instruments. Once winter comes, we decide to dig down into the ice so we can retrieve our uh, our poor dwarf who drowned in the, in the ocean earlier. But in a moment of brilliance, I realize I can dig down underneath our tavern. So I got this idea what if I put a basement below the tavern with windows looking out into the water so my dwarves can party it up in the tavern while being able to be in essentially an aquarium? So I decided that I'm going to learn how to make windows and I'm going to do it, regardless of how tedious and annoying it might be. So we set up an area for sand to be collected and set up all the workshops and the work orders for my glass windows. With it already being the middle of winter and I'm scared that the project might not get finished, I just start walling out the bottom just in case. And around this time, we finally encounter our first real danger to our fort, Castneth, an agitated giant osprey. After finding out that my expedition leader has already been hurt by it, I hastily try to throw together a new hospital. But in the middle of that, I find out that a dwarven baby has been found dead in our workshop district. Why the hell would that... Oh, we're gonna assign you as the leader, and we're gonna put you guys into the squad, and let's go kill this osprey. There we go. That's one dead bird. Wait, why is she out here? She shouldn't even be out here. I'm still very confused as to how this happened. Like, why are you? How are you here? All right, let's put together a hospital for you. Hopefully, we'll be able to pull her to rest or something. And in the middle of all the craziness, we finally made our first window. So I send a dwarf down to go install the window. We'll see how it looks once the ice thaws out. While creating my hospital, I remembered that I need to make a well for water. While digging out this well, I thought that if I dug out these little edges here, that it would create more space for water to fill up the well. But I trapped a dwarf down here by doing so. I thought that I would be able to dig a channel down to there, but all I did was make two downward slopes, so there was nowhere the dwarf could go. I eventually gave up and made stairs. Oh look, more fighting going on in our fortress. A giant hamster. What? Oh good lord. Well, if you murdered your friend, you might as well get him back. And would you look at that? It did work. It looks so cool, honestly. I can't wait to see this tavern just filled with patrons ready to drink and watch all the fish out by the ocean. Nothing could possibly ruin this beautiful moment. Yeah, the kids are getting eaten by dingoes. That's not good. Well, with being a new player and 
still learning things, I feel like I succeeded pretty well in making a sea tavern with an underwater basement in it. If you guys watched this one all the way through, I appreciate you sticking around and watching. Seriously, thank you. I'll make sure to do a part two where our tavern gets an upgrade, and our fort, well, you'll see. Again, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.